So, I didn't know what to expect when it was suggested I cover the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Things were humming along at the registration area as people were checking in from all over the United States and from countries abroad. I got my media credentials and look at that! They even put my silly little blog name on my pass. Where everybody knows your name. The affair looked like it was sponsored by just about everybody on Earth who cares about science and that's good because they were hosting just about everybody on Earth who cares about science and they wanted them all to feel welcome. And they're always glad you came. Knock it off. Anyway, if you see the size of this thing, you'll want a segue too. And here's why. But what else you got? Yeah, you can really wear your feet out with rows and rows of exhibits on everything from plant sciences, physics and astronomy, microbiology, math, medicine and health science, energy and transportation, environmental stuff, materials and bioengineering, electrical and mechanical engineering? Who put those together? Chemistry, even behavioral science and things with animals. There's even more categories of exhibits on things you probably failed in high school, and keep in mind, and I don't mean to be condescending, these are kids. Like this kid who did rotation curves in five dimensions. I know there were four, and it's got more equations than are in my master's thesis. This is ridiculous. Just look at that metric tensor. You know what they say, it ain't rocket science, unless it is. Now this is right up my alley, complete with aerodynamic experiments on a tennis court. And this guy built his own wind tunnel to test his models of winglets. A wind tunnel! This booth didn't have any words on it yet, but I bet it's cool. What is that? These are models of how your teenager might catch HPV, so quick, turn off their MySpace. And while you're at it, turn down their heavy metal too. No surprise there. Hey, here's another one right up my alley. Who are you calling obsessive compulsive? And for you nosy fathers of daughters, there's a booth for you too. This exhibit ought to do well because it's about a game we're all addicted to and it's got a sparkly tablecloth. Because you ought to realize there's a good bit of marketing that goes into a good science fair exhibit. For instance, if you're trying to sell a virtual librarian that's primarily made up of computers and software, it might help if you make your librarian kinda hot. Put your primary customer in a bikini. But the staple of science marketing is the pun. We science nerds love puns. It's just basic. You get it? You could have a pun scavenger hunt. What a mess. More appealing. And don't touch this globe because it's shocking. I don't even want to know. And alliteration will help you cope with copepods. This is a copepod. No, I don't know. So they're pretty much all set up, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday they'll be judged, but on Thursday you can come in and check it all out for yourself for free. It'll be open to the public from 9am to 9pm at the Georgia World Congress Center. Get your nerd on. 